here to talk about managing Brexit. Um, I'm a freelance tech and commercial law solicitor. That means that I work on a project basis with law firms and in-house with technology companies, um, dealing with particular strategies that they're trying to overcome or particular projects or product launches that they're trying to um, bring to market. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter at freelancelaw.ie or there's my LinkedIn details as well. Now, this is a quote from Bob Dylan. Does anybody know the next line? It is, the times they are changing, and indeed the times are changing. We're going through change that we haven't experienced in quite some time. And Brexit is something that all companies are going to have to deal with in Ireland. But we have confirmation biases where we want to think that it's not really going to happen. So who here thinks that Brexit isn't going to happen? Everyone thinks that Brexit's going to happen? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Because Brexit does mean Brexit. Even if you only think there's a 50% chance of it happening, you should be making a plan on what this will mean for your company. So that means a strategy. And who here has a Brexit strategy in their company? That's it. No, not one person has put their hand up for that. So this is something that is definitely coming, that everyone here thinks is definitely coming, but we haven't created a strategy for it yet. Um, and perhaps that is to do with the amount of information that we are being bombarded with the entire time and the lack of certainty about what Brexit is actually going to look like. So we don't know EEA, non-EEA, customs union, non-customs union. Is it actually going to be no free movement of labour? How far is it going to go? When is it going to happen? We don't know. But that doesn't mean that you don't have a strategy for these possibilities. Because each of those possibilities can be managed and doesn't have to take your company by surprise. So SWOT both means you do have to do some work and it is business 101. Does anyone know what SWOT stands for as an acronym? Yes, someone does. <laughs> anyone else? Yes. So you've probably done this before. Even your baby steps with your company, you've probably done a SWOT test. It's time to do it again. Bring out that piece of paper Put the vertical line and the horizontal line and just think about Brexit for your company. It is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Now, I might ask you to do this from the perspective of your company, but I would also look at doing it from the perspective of your um, suppliers and from the perspective of your customers. So three different sheets of paper and just think about these things, brainstorm, if you're a small company and you're in charge of strategy, do it yourself. If you're a bigger company, get uh, team leaders in different parts of your company to come in, have a meeting, brainstorm. And for this, to show you how it would work, I'm picking a company that is manufacturing in Ireland, um, kind of precision engineering good. It uses some components from the UK um, and has some customers in the UK. So what would a SWOT analysis, very basic because we have very limited time here, look like for that company? So a strength for that company is that it is manufacturing in Ireland, so there's no tariffs or customs duties in other EU markets, which is a huge advantage for us. We get to keep that. What is a weakness? The components are coming from the UK. Does this mean we're going to have to pay tariffs when we're bringing that component into Ireland? Uh, a funny one is VAT. If we have been... If there's a sales tax in the new UK climate, we won't be able to recover that fat when it comes into Ireland anymore. Um, basically, we're talking about more expense. That's not great. Then, from our supplier or our customers, will they? Will our customers have to pay a customs import? Will they have to have a VAT charge that they can't reclaim? Um, basically, our product is going to become more expensive to make, and it's going to become more expensive to sell into one of our markets, which is the UK. An opportunity. Perhaps that component that has been manufactured in the UK has a lot of different customers in the European Union. This is something that your company could think about making. So it gets rid of the UK supplier and sends supplies into other companies that need that component. And is the threat. Could that UK company start making your good for your UK customers because it will be able to make it cheaper. So that's a really basic SWOT, 
for one particular type of company. But you can see there's a lot of things to be dealt with in that. And to do that, we want to make a plan which will mitigate those risks and take advantage of the opportunities. And you should use your legal department or your legal advisor to help you to do that. Law is maybe a really old fashioned, but it's been around for millennia. There's nothing we haven't seen before. There's no change that we haven't been able to deal with. So contracts are very well able to accommodate the changes that your company's going to have to navigate in the next two, four, six years. So you should review your contracts, existing ones, with customers and suppliers to see how you can reduce the challenge for your company to, to continue to trade in the new market. So if we take the example of the UK-based supplier, and we look at the contract, outside of tariffs and import duties, will there be a lot of currency fluctuation between Ireland and the UK, in the euro and sterling? Could this mean that something that uh, you buy in from the UK gets way more expensive, and it's no longer worth you purchasing it from the UK? Um, and you can put a clause in your contract that will say, if there's a currency fluctuation above a certain percent, Either they will bear it, your company will bear it, or you agree to renegotiate. So that's something that can accommodate that uncertainty. Will tariffs be introduced? You can put in a gross up clause so that uh, your side or their side will be responsible for paying tariffs. So you can um, manage that risk through your contract as well. Um, do you want that contract to terminate on Brexit? Will you decide that the regulatory hurdles are too big to continue? to use that supplier? Um, do you think that you need to have your supplier in the European Union for some regulation purposes? Or is just the market going to be too difficult? You don't want to get into all this customs. You want to get out of the contract. Is so that something that you can put in your standard form with your UK suppliers now if it's something you think you're going to need? Finally, is your IP protected under the post-Brexit regime? Now, that is because the UK be leaving the European Union you may have European IP protection. There's a man right here, Niall Rooney, who'd be only too glad to advise you on how to manage IP through the transition from uh, UK or European Union to uh, UK only IP protection. Uh, on your existing contracts, so you already have agreements in place, and you're like, well, maybe I can't do anything about that to manage Brexit. You need to have a look at them to see what, how much you're exposed to those contracts that don't have any Brexit accommodation clauses in it. So will they expire before or after Brexit? How many Bre uh, contracts do you have are going to run over? If there's a termination provision, are you going to give notice for that so you can negotiate in new term uh, Brexit clauses? Will those contracts become too onerous to continue with? Do you need to look at trying to start a termination now um, to allow you to accommodate the new post-Brexit market? Is your force majeure clause in your existing uh, contracts wide enough to allow you to terminate on Brexit if it's going to become too hard for you to operate? Frustration is when something that was not foreseen at the time of entering the contract means happens and then the contract is too difficult to continue to operate. It, I don't know whether that doctrine will work for Brexit but it might be worth a shot if you're really tied into something that's really crucifying you in terms of continued performance. So, to close, um, do not ignore Brexit, but don't get overwhelmed by it either. There's something you can do for each of the risks that you identify. Get your legal person department in to change your contracts to accommodate those risks that you've identified in your SWAT. Um, Diversify, think of other markets outside the UK. I think Ireland is very reliant on the UK, but we do have huge opportunities in Europe which can be capitalized on um, and grab those opportunities. So it's not all bad. All the risks can be dealt with. Um, it's just a matter of identifying them and then dealing with them. So that's it from me. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me. No, oh, just one question. Uh, so the question was, do I think it's helpful that Ireland and the UK have common law heritage when it comes to dealing with Brexit? Um, 
yes, and I, I, there are some parts of it that will be, like say the common travel area, because that pre-exists the Euro, uh, Eurozone, we may have the ability to keep employees from the UK more than other European Union countries, but that's definitely um, a risk. Um, I'm not sure, we're so tied into the European Union, I think that the European Union is probably going to override most of those pre-existing arrangements that we have with, with the UK, but definitely the common culture and common law system has helped and hopefully will continue to. Um, Okay. okay, the question there was on data protection, on how to prepare for the parallel universe that might exist post-Brexit in Britain. Um, I actually don't think that there's going to be a huge change in data protection um, if you're dealing with UK customers because they're going to have to keep most of the same rules in place if they want to continue to access the EU market. So I think and GDPR is going to come in, which is the General Data Protection Regulation for anyone who um, has a business that involves processing personal data. Um, I think it's going to be mostly the same rules. GDPR is going to come in before Brexit occurs, um, so I would continue to monitor it, but continue on the basis that it's going to be the same as the 